jahajis who came from India did not come out of a vacuum. They came out of a highly developed civilization which had you know, very fixed uh, read the passage, you know, different uh, stages of life. And, 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 and this, this, these uh, read the passage sort of guided them throughout life from birth to death, rites, rituals. They had the, the comfort of the caste system, which gave them security in, in, in India, because everybody in the caste system, you know your place. Yeah. And, and, and what you have been doing in your caste, people have been doing for centuries before. So let us say the caste of shoemakers, shooter warriors. I mean, India is the, is the only place where where I could go and give a measurement for my foot and come back the next day and get a pair of shoes made precisely to, 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 to those specifications. Yeah. And that is because that Juta Wala, his caste, that his ancestry for the last 300 years has been in the making of shoes. So he has absolutely, if you want, you know, a good, a good shirt to be made, a good pants, or a good topi, or a good dhoti. You go to these specialist Indians and who have been, whose caste functions it is to, to, to make this thing over centuries. So it, 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 it is that kind of um, fixity with which the Indian came to the Caribbean. They were quite sure of themselves and their position in time and in space. And then they are told that you are going to work as a, as a gilmitya, as indented laborer in agriculture. They were told that. Yeah. That, that. That was what they were told when they were being recruited. So knowing that they were coming to work in, in an agricultural background, they decided to equip themselves to function in that agricultural background. So they didn't come here in, or in Fiji or in Mauritius in total ignorance. Yeah. They had an idea where they were going. Um, well, not an idea or, or this precise place, but they were going to plantation colonies to work in agriculture. And therefore, I think that, that that phenomenon of the Jahaji bundle is absolutely amazing. Because in the 72 years that they, 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 they came to Trinidad, of course they had come from the Guyana earlier on 1838. They start here in Trinidad in 1845. Um, okay, and in, in those 72 years, they brought a kind of unbelievably an unbelievable, unbelievably, uh, they came from a high civilization with so many of the, of the fixities of life, fixities of life, knowing where they had come from, believing in reincarnation, where they were going to. So when they, when they were coming to the Caribbean, they knew they were coming to an agricultural area. And, and, and over these 72 years, they brought, I mean, an unbelievable array of fruits, cuttings, um, herbs, you know, which, which I, I was, I was, I was, I was talk, talking about um, that night, and even so, the list I gave was not complete. For example, they were, I mean, after I finished, I said there are two I didn't mention. One is Hindi. That is okra, which I didn't mention. And the other was something that, that the women brought. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at how many women brought this particular thing. It is called Suraj Mukhi. Hmm? Suraj Mukhi. Suraj Mukhi means with the eye to the sun. With the eye to the sun. Suraj Mukhi. And, and, and it's a very beautiful flower. And when, when they brought it, the English people, could not, could not pronounce the word Suraj Mukhi. So they call it sunflower, sunflower, which the Indian used to great advantage. They had the sunflower seeds by, by sinking it, sinking in parching it. They made sunflower oil. They used the sunflower stalks to make mats, 
mats, light, very light mats, particularly for, for, for babies to sleep on. And once it was used, uh, finished, they used it as manure. So the, so the sunflower was, was very versatile. And, and I mean, that, that is something that they brought in addition to all of the others which I mentioned that, that day. So that, so that, so that um, you know, one of the books I have done is called India in the Caribbean. I don't know if you know that. India in the Caribbean. Myself and David that began. The idea of India in the Caribbean came to me because of, of, of this, this very thing that I'm talking about. Because they, they recreated India in the Caribbean. They recreated India in the Caribbean. With all the Indian names, the Ram names and, and all the other names. One of the things that the plantation system did is that it, it, it really cut down the very beautiful forests we had in the Caribbean and in, in, in the Pacific, cut down the forest. Because they wanted to use the wood for fuel and in any event they wanted the land to, you know, to plant cane. One of the amazing things that the, the Indians have done, and this they, they did wherever they went, they sort of broke up that very drab cane scape where you'll only be seeing fields after fields of cane alone. They broke that up by creating oases little Indian villages throughout this throughout the sugar and I'm saying this I could give you examples in Trinidad but Guyana is the same thing, Fiji is the same thing, Mauritius is South Africa is the same thing. Where they broke the monotony of the cane scape by by creating their own little settlements in which they planted all of those things that I'm telling you. Huh? in which they read the animals that, that, that they had brought from India. So, so, so and of course you have, but each one of these little, little villages that they created had, had a name, like, like Pinal is one of those areas. Chulku village, which is just before Princess Town. Mm -hmm. Palmist, all of those areas, which had it not been for the Indians would have been unbroken miles and miles of pure cane. But, 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 but they broke that up and you have the villages all over where they created India in the Caribbean, where they created India in the Caribbean. So they would have the, 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 the buffalo, the mines, they would have the zebu bull on the ship also, they brought their own sheep and goats, well, they didn't bring, I mean, what these animals would put on the ship for food. But invariably, you have a, a population of mainly vegetarians on the ship. Whenever the ship reached here, you had a number of sheep and goats and, you know, murga and murgi, yes. which they didn't eat on the ship. So all of these things are now, are now cultivated. The Indians didn't want to, they didn't eat in the ship, they come and eat it. Yeah, no, no, no. They, they took it, they took it and, 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 and took it to the villages and that is how, how you find animals, you find all of these fruits that I mentioned, you find all of these herbs and, and, and spices. Cages with these mongoose, again being read by these um, animal people, people who read animals. And, and, and thanks to the mongoose, I mean the snake population was um, considerably curtailed, after which the mongoose sort of developed a taste for murga and murgi. <laughs> so, it became, so it became a pest. But that, that's, another, that's another important Indian importation, the mongoose, from, um, you know, those, those. the mongoose are still very, um, very frequent in India, very frequent. Yeah. Really in the place, yeah, yeah, in 1845. <coughs> I, I'm sure you, well, I've written this up because I, I was amazed that the governor in 1845 is saying 
and he takes a day and a half to get from St. Joe to Salmon. And he says, only if you have a good horse, eh? I was laughing. He said, only if you have a good horse that you could make it. You can't even walk in it. That was the question. What they normally did at that time, if they wanted to go to San Fernando Point, they took a boat. They took a boat from Port of Spain and went down so along the coast because there was no road. And this man is saying that, oh, that you know, if, if he did want to he'll take a day and a half and the the horse, the horse has to just find little islands in between. Look for, for dry spot, but it is through mud most of the time. And a hundred years after that, you wouldn't think that he described that situation because the Indians, you just put the Indians to, to, to that kind of land and they put in dock to water. Mm -hmm. That's where they, they grew up. That's where they, they still live in, in Bengal and, and UP and so on. So, so what the what the Europeans thought was useless land, the Indians take this useless land, drain that whole swamp, created created the the roadway um, from Saint Joseph to Point Pierre. Also, once you reach Point Pierre, you start getting the hills in, into San Fernando, and that is why there are a number of villages on the road that have in their name, like Calcutta number one, Calcutta number two, a place called Jambli Tola. You see a lot of these names are now um, removed. Westernized. Yeah, but by the way, Junction. It was a very big junction, a very large village called Jambli Tola. Um, meaning, and it, it was that they wrote, uh, uh, could, uh, it meant, I mean, Jambli Tola meant, that's where the people from the jungle, the jungles who came, in India, and there were lots of them who came from the jungle, where that they settled there. Tola means you know, a settlement. So Jungli Tola was that whole area by, you know, where the Unarine Junction is, and to the, and to the east of it. So that, so that, so that as they, as they drained, as they dredged, they gave, they gave names to the, the villages that they now created, which were not there before. Just opposite the university, just opposite the university. That whole area was 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 dread. That was total swamp, and they call it Morang. Mm. It's still called Morang. Yeah. Morang. Morang is a place in Madras. And when I go to India, I go to India, I say, "What the hell is Morang?" So, so you then find out. Eh? So, the, so the the, 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 the Madrasis who came and, and drained that whole area, they call it Morang. You know, after after the the place that they came from in India. So there's, there's that remarkable, and then I told you about Kakandi, Kakandi, mm -hmm. who was a, a Bengali Girmitya, who came and, and finished his five years on the Felicity Estate. And then he started to capture the land. But nobody wanted it. Who would want that land? Once you walk, you go down to your waist. Who would want that land? But, 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 you see, the, the, the eye, the eye with which he looked at it was a different eye. It was an eye actuated by a particular philosophy, so that if the Englishman looked on it and he saw it as totally useless land, the Indian looking at the same land did not, did not see the same thing. Eh? Yeah. He saw total promise. He saw, and that's why I said the philosophy is so important. So the Englishman would say, you go ahead, Mr. Coley man, take the land, take how much you want. Totally, I don't know what you're going to do with it. The Indian man saw something different when he looked at the same land from what the Englishman saw. So when Kakandi saw that order, he said, oh my God, I'm going to be a millionaire. And so, and so he did. Yeah. So he did because this thing, the thing is totally Useless, it's only Zanji and, 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 and Gonga and Alligator and so on. He said, No, man. So he drained that whole area. He said, The area is called Kakandi. He drained that, that whole area and made housing lots and so on. And planted a lot of rice in the area. And rice was another thing those fellas brought. You know, the dhan, dhan mm -hmm. which is, which is the, 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 the rice that you could plant. So, so, I mean, 
the dhan was, was, was very much available. Um, so he planted up the whole area, man. And then, and then you know, blocked up a whole city and made, made a whole settlement in Felicity there, which, which, which is named after him, Kakandi. Saying that what Tulsi did, he took the, the Valmiki Ramayana and added to the Torah as a Bhojpuri word. It's not a Hindi word. So if you're doing Hindi, you will hardly get this word because it's Bhojpuri, it's our language. So, so in other words, he added his own flavor, his own Koran, yeah. writing in Avadi, which is very close to Bhojpuri almost interchangeable with Bhojpuri, so it was what everybody understood. Yeah. So here was a text that the average Girmitya, who was illiterate in Sanskrit, but, but, but learned in, I mean, could read Bhojpuri and Avadi, the language of the Ramayana. So they could all read the thing. They could all read it. It wasn't beyond them. And then, the, and then the Ramayan story related very particularly to the Girmitias because the Ramayan, the theme of the Ramayan story is exile and return. Hmm? Ram in Banbas. These fellows here, seems like Ram in Banbas. And then Ram returns to Ayodhya, which is how we have the origin of the whole Diwali festival. Because Ram and Banbas is these coolies here, as in Banbas, where they exiled, as Ram was exiled. And of course, Ram returned, and it was their hope that they would return also. They didn't come here to, 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 to stay permanently. So that, so, that, so that the whole theme of the Ramayana, and the major the story of the Ramayana, was their story, yeah. was their story. And the descriptions of places and trees and so on in the Ramayana are tropical, I mean, tropical descriptions of, of, of places in UP and so on, 
what, 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 which you will get in Pinal and which you will get in you know, Rio Claro anyway. So, so, so that sort of the, the physical descriptions in the Rama, you know, the description that they ain't all what, snow and ice, and that, uh, like, like how European literature tells us. But, but, but of trees and plants and these very trees and plants that, that he writes about is what those people knew and is, is, is what they brought. And that is why the Ramayan story has such everlasting significance in all sections of the diaspora, in all sections of the diaspora. Because it, because it bore very special resemblance to their lives in India, to the Caribbean to which they came, to the idea of being in exile here, like Ram, And, and, and for the hope of return, which of course Ram returned to Ayodhya, and they were always hoping that at some stage that, that they would return, and that's why the Ramayana story is so, is so relevant. And then of course the, the philosophy of the Ramayana, and the philosophy of the Ramayana is, is very important. I was talking the sacredness of work which they picked up in the Ramayana. The importance of the importance of, of, of discussion. The importance of discussion. You know in the in the, <coughs> the part of the Ramayana it's called Balakan. There are different kinds of the Ramayana. And, 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 and what appeals to me intellectually is, is one of the chopais that we say is Binu Satsang Vivekan Nahui. That is pregnant. Satsang means the search for truth. How do you get how do you get the truth if you don't have discussion? So they get together in satsang to talk. So Binu Satsang Vivekan Nahui. Without such sun, you, you, you know, you don't get any wisdom, you don't get any knowledge, you end up like a fool. Rama Kripavina Sulabha Nasu. And if you, if you feel that you can pursue that search for truth without, without referring to Ram, if it is a godless search for truth, then Sulabha Nasu, you, you, you're wasting your time. <coughs> there is no merit, <coughs> satsangati muda, mangala muda. Out of, out of satsangati, out of discussion, um, mangala, mangala, gala, you get, you get a reward, you get a mangala muda. Out of such discussions and talks and conversations, you are amply rewarded, mangala muda. So if I Siddhi Sada, Siddhi Sada, Sadhana. So if out, and out of these fruits, out of these same fruits, um, you, you get Sadhana, Sadhana, full of you. End up with eternal life. <laughs> Seeking after truth, etc., and involving God in that search. The reward for that is finally sadhana, sadhana, 
which is eternal life. So that, um, you, you know, that, that kind of philosophy, you don't find anywhere else. And that's why, that's why, that's why I mean, I have always said I find Tulsidas for all purposes is totally superior to Shakespeare. And yet, you know, this whole country for a whole blasted month, the whole month of, of the, it's only Shakespeare, Shakespeare, everybody talking about Shakespeare. This. So, so, but yeah, that, that is the result of, of colonialism, where they, where they push Shakespeare down the throat. Um, and, and nobody talks about a contemporary of Shakespeare, a man who lived at the same time, lived longer than Shakespeare, was born before he died, died after. So, but, so, so the, the point I'm making is that the Ramayana is so full of that, of that wisdom all the time, continuously. And these, these, these Gilmitias, these bonded laborers, refer to it all the time, continuously. My own view is that that is what kept them going, despite all these extremely um, challenging conditions that they, they, they had to, to undergo. And that is why, you know, from them a number of pundits arose, and the pundits were the fellows who were not going, you know, from place to place, and, and having, having yajna, having three, four days and so on, where, where they expounded on, on the Ramayana, and and that, I think, gave these people that necessary spiritual backbone for them to, to persist in the, in, the, in, the, in the way that they have. But you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the pundits, unfortunately, this is both in Hinduism and in Islam, concentrate on the theology. Eh? Concentrate on the theology. They don't. They don't translate. They don't or they transmit the Ramayana as literature. Mm -hmm. They only look at it from the theological. Ram do this and Ram do that. And you have to bow and pray. You know, which which antagonizes a lot of young people who ought to be attracted both to Quran and Ramayana from an intellectual perspective as literature. As philosophy, as philosophy, I think the whole society can benefit from that rather than these pundits, you know, going and, and, and choosing, you know, only those sections that they feel they have some competence and talking about the story of Rawan and how Ram and how we're going and burn down the whole Lanka and all of which is, is real magical, which most people can't yeah. understand. What if you, if, and one of the things that I tell them, but they, they don't like it, is that what you should do is extract the philosophy. The university should be teaching Ramayana as literature. Eh? Yep. As literature, not as theology. Mm -hmm. Let the pundits do that. But the pundits leave out the literature. The pundits, by and large, leave out the philosophy. And they only, you know, talk a certain thing about it. Ram. And put putting him in a kind of a, a mythical, unrealistic, a way to which young people today don't relate. Hmm? To which they don't relate. Which goes like the debate. Yes, yes, and they go into the thing like Pentecostal and so on. You understand? Yeah. But why? Because 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 for the thinking young rational person, all of this heavy theology doesn't make any sense. Suppose you come here in university and you meet a pundit and they hold they call in you and tell you to give you your RT and how much puja is you, how many chow pai you, know, you, 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 tell him buzz off. Because young people you know, are more interested in, in thought, eh? in ideas, what you could learn from that. And I think the Ramayana is so, so full of that, that kind of wisdom. Example. The Dantal is one example. I'm explaining that night that the Dantal is the that dant. Dant, which is a, a a steel rod that joined two yokes. 
Right. They take that, and then they take the um, the horseshoe and the metal from the horseshoe, and that's how you get this percussion instrument, which is the dan dan to dan ta. It's a musical song. And, and, and we can also say that, that they brought in their memories, they brought in their memories, they brought in their imagination. So many of the artifacts that they were using in the, in the, in the, the native places and recreated all of these artifacts. You couldn't bring a seal and a lower heart from India. I mean, that is massive, eh? Yeah. 40, 50 pounds. <laughs> but, but, but they brought the idea of the sail and the lora, and they would go on the river bank and choose a nice flat piece of stone for the sail, and they knew exactly how to mark it up. Nobody thought, they, they knew. They were doing that. They knew exactly how to, how to grind down the lora. Dhenki, you know Dhenki? Dhenki, which is, which is, is, is something to, to grind. It looks like, like a donkey, eh? It's a big piece of, a uh, big shaft like that. And at the top of the shaft, you have a, something that pounds the rice, and then there's a little hole you put the rice. So, so the Dhenki, that is for milling rice. They created that here, because that's exactly what they were using. You know the jata, you know the jata for grinding rice or any grain, dal or anything. That, these are things that, that they fishnet, fishnet. Particularly, you see the net I see them using in all villages in India. Which I see them is this hand net, this hand net where you throw it. And, 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 and. So, so, um, in their, in their imagination, Musar and Onkri. Musar and Onkri. What is that? What am I saying? What is Musar and Onkri? Hmm? What? You know? Mortal yeah, Mortal Festival. Yes. Musar and Onkri, which is something that they, they were using in, in the early night. Jaharu. Which in India they make out of coconut leaf and all kind of. Same thing here. So, so all, 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 all of these um, artifacts for moving off very quickly when you come here, moving off, you can't have time, five, six years, they what? They just, they just hit the ground running, recreating these things that they, that, that they were constantly using in, in, in India. Um, to, to get a, 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 a running start when they came here. The houses, eh, the ajupas that they made, made out of the walls out of cow dung and the, and the um, roof out of carrot. Well, they don't, I never seen carrot. I didn't have carrot in it. There. It was coconut leaves and so on. So we had a, a superior covering of carrot. But the whole tapia walls, eh? where they mix the dung and the earth. And, 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 and that mixture of dung keeps the insects away. So you don't have bug and, and termite and coming in your house because, because that, that gobar mixed up with the, with the earth keeps insects and, 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 and so on away. And of course, it kept the house cool, eh? because because it's earth you talk about. So we're able to, as I said, quickly recreate India in the Caribbean. All the all all the food and the culinary arts that they they brought here. The food we eat here. I put it differently. The, yeah, the Indian food, eh? the Indian food that we eat here. The rural Indian food, if you go by anybody's house, is precisely what you get in the villages we came from. Hmm? 
I, I go to you know, my village, which is just outside of Bharaj in the UK, and you get sada roti, you get dal puri, you get um, alu puri, you get arvi, arvi, what's arvi, elus, you get arvi puri. It's precisely what they make. So that a lot of Indians who go from the town area and, and, and they go to India, and they go to the, the, the urban areas like Delhi or Mumbai or Calcutta, and they come back and they say, "Oh God, me and see, none of we can enough food here. It's only what you can in, in, in doubt. You know what you can doubt? Paneer. <laughs> Paneer. Um, Biryani. Mm. Nah. And nah. Yeah. So, so they go and then they come back and they say, you, you talk a lot of foolishness. You say, I ain't get one piece of root. I ain't get one piece of choke. <laughs> well, of course you wouldn't when you don't go to, 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 to where these things are served. Like my wife and, and family. They don't like this, this, this Indian restaurant. I like it because I lived in India for years. So I love all this. Matar paneer and I love it because I used to eat that all the time. Yeah, yeah. So I eat, but when, when you go to say, right, you eat now, you, you, you eat, you eat the Indian. But it's not the food that, that we know. Yeah. But you can go, as I said, you can go in, what call, in all our villages, there. they have little dhabas, you know, dhabas, which are um, little dhabas, a little roadside restaurant. Oh my God, and I used to just sit down there and you tell the fellow you want sari roti. You want dosti, you know dosti, yeah, two in one. which is friendly, it's friend, dosti yeah. means friendly dosti. So it's two in one, it's friendly. You ask them for dosti, you ask them for, for alu puri or, or arvi puri, and damadulka chokha, and baigan, baigan chokha. And you get it, you get it, you know. So I would sit down there with my friends and we eat for two, three hours because they're cooking it right there. They're cooking it right there. You know? They're going to put some more pepper, put some more achar, put some more achar, and, and you're home. You're home and running. When I come back to Delhi, well, I have to, I have to you know, change the menu completely because the food is, is totally different. So, I mean, all Indian food is not, is, is not the same different parts of India. Did. But 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 our kind, our particular diet, you go in, 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 in those areas in the UP and Bihar, Bangladesh, Bangladesh which was part of the place we came from. Um, you get the same food. You get the same food. And you get people with the same names. And they, they look uh, familiar. Um, All right. I think I think the the most unique creation, the most unique creation of of the Indians was paratha, what you call basup shot. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you go to India and you ask for paratha, it is a totally different thing. It's a totally the little, little fry roti. I mean, it doesn't resemble uh, what we have. Now the paratha, what we call basap is is really a creation of the jahaj, creation on the ship. Because, because the fellows who were cooking, they're called bhandari, bhandari again, cooking is very specialized. So not every and anybody is cooking. You have to be a bhandari to cook. I mean, I mean, you could, otherwise somebody who's not going to go home, but if you're going to a, a wedding or a year's not, year, not an Indian or anybody, you had to be a Bandari, but those are the fellows who are. So the Bandaris are the fellows who were brought on the ship to, to cook. And these fellows, imagine a ship with 250, 300, up to 500 people coming, and them fellows have to be chapati. Chapati. Now think of how many thousands of chapati you have to make because three three times of morning, lunch and evening. So it's only chapati, chapati, or the making so the whole tea, whole night, cooking chapati. 
but tonight you have to cook for tomorrow. But because of the ingenuity of massive towers, you have the, the art, the, the, the flour, and, and, and the oil and so on. And so they make an enormous load. They make an in that that is how they think the thing they did. Part so they made an enormous loy, spread it out so, cook it on this massive tower, and then and then they made the ship owners order a doubler. A doubler is something that looks like an oar, hmm? you know, like an oar. Yeah, the rolling boat. Yes. So, but the purpose of a doubler was to bust it up, to bust it up. Because imagine you have three hundred people. And you have to, to think, well, so you, you, you bust it up with the doubler and you put it in a tray and you just go and go handful fast, fast. Right now you finish a wrong so these fellas finish each other thing. So 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 that that enormously <coughs> save time and, and and labor. So so that's why the bus up shot is a real creation <coughs> of the jihad. And once they came Trinidad or Guyana and so on. Well, they just put it on land. Eh? Let's put the bus up shut on on land. Yeah. So that that is a, that is that is something unique. So I mean, Trinidad didn't now go to India, and we, we showed them how to make the bus up bus up, bus up shut, and they are quite fascinated by it. You know, quite fascinated. So, um, so that I would say. But most of the rest of the thing is, is what we got. Oh, doubles, eh? Doubles. That is, that is absolutely unique. Doubles. You don't get doubles in India. You have doubles in Fiji. You know the doubles? The, 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 yeah. That is, that is a creation of Trinidad. Yeah. That's a creation of Trinidad. Because first they have Barra, eh? A Barra and Chutney. They buy a Barra and Chutney. And I felt I said, well, double it up now. Double three, put one. Two. And then, then after that, they started to start get Chana. Chana. So, so the doubles, the doubles is, is, is a creation of, of the ingenuity here. And of course, and of course the doubles is enhanced by, by Bhandanya, Bhandanya, which is Shadow Beni, which was not brought from India. The Indians brought Dhanya. When they came here, they found wild dhania, ban, ban dhania. So you know, the Indians Indianized, and this, this is how you call it, um, charabanina. Yeah. The Indians in there, they call it ban dhania, meaning it, 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 it's not the dhania we bring, it, it's the wild one. So they brought dhania, what they call this one, ban dhania. That people say they bring it, they bring that. They, they, they they renamed it in their own in their own fashion. So so, so the bandania is something that that of course they they now use to enhance the whole quality of the of the doubles. Because without without bandania is nobody. But that, that's something that, that, that they created. Uh, thank you. I'm just going to ask a few things in terms of chutney now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, first of all, just in terms of the tradition from which it comes out of, maybe just a background, just briefly. In terms it comes out of that same Bhojpur tradition, eh? mm -hmm. with um, like like wedding songs, Martikor, Martikor songs in India. You can see how the um, origin, the appearance of this chutney. And of course, when they when they came here, they continued they continued in that tradition. And one of the one of the interesting things is that um, the calypso has had has had certainly had a, an influence in on chutney because a lot of the innuendos of calypso are now are now transferred to chutney. So, so, but if you, if you, if, if you don't understand, if you not, you don't understand the double entendre, right? the double entendre. So, Hari Bina Chattani, 
So the woman looks at her husband with, with bright eyes and says, So hari vena satani kaisevani. Kaisevani? Kaisevani. So lori vena satani kaisevani. Now what is she telling him there? What is she telling him there? Hmm? I'll give you the thing but without the sweetness. <laughs> because you don't treat me good. <laughs> You understand? So that is where, where, where the, the, the double entrant, which is, is, is the characteristic of Calypso, gets, gets transposed here. And that's why in these chutney things, when it's people sing, they all have joking each other and say, like, Gim, Gim. You know, but but that, that is about telling the husband, that if you don't, if you don't you know, treat me better, you'll get it, but without no. No, 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 they get dry. They're called dry sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 that, that, so, so that, that's very rampant, eh? And of course, have you, I mean, they, they, they have, they've done something on Sundar Popo. You, 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 you sort of, have you got any biographical information about Sundar mm, Popo? Yeah. And, and, and here again, here again, he, the rights of the, of the folk experience, you know, and what has happened to the Indian since they came here? Na na nani, ghar se nikle. That is both for you. That is not Hindi. That is real pure both. Na na nani, ghar se nikle. Badla se dukan hai, dono jaage baite. Na na nani, ghar se nikle. Two of them leave their house. Um, and Badla say, Dukhan me, dono jage baite. Two of them go and sit down in Badla shop. Yeah. Badla say, Dukhan me, dono jage baite. That's pure Bhojpuri. That's not him. And then he come and he say, Well, Nana drinking white one, and Nana drinking <laughs> wine. <laughs> you know, so, 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 so that, that again talks about the way in which. The Indian has been transformed because the women in India, women of the Indian, they don't don't drink. They're supposed to drink at all. And then, um, and then of course, he goes on to say that I try to go home now, and he tried to put on his bicycle now. Nana ride bicycle. Nana Yeah, yeah. You run and they both fall along and so on, <laughs> tumble up on, on each other. So, so it is the same. Um, you should say folk humor. Eh? folk life, how the peasants live. And I think that is the the whole the whole point of the of, of the, the, the chutney experience. Of course now there's a further emendation on chutney because they have another call chutney soka. Mm -hmm. And chutney soka, which is I don't know what it is, I think it's all stupid it's really. That's my own view. I think it's all nonsense, but that's only my conservative view. Chutney to chutney soka. But, um, but still in the rural areas, you, you, you find um, there's a lot of chutney singing, and a lot of these women in the Matiko ceremony, where it's only women, women were, were allowed, women and little children and so on. They really sang, they sang informing the young lady what was going to be her experience, not that you're going to get married and so on, and saying it explicitly but not explicitly hinting all the time what you will happen and what what will happen to you oh, yeah or oh, all that, that that kind of thing so that <coughs> so the magical ceremony is a sort of continuation of that hopeful tradition in which the women inform the younger women about what what is the new marriage experience that they that they going to get into so men were not allowed to these things. I mean, I, I was able to go in them when I was so small with my mother because children are not The children don't understand. Mm -hmm. They understand what's going on there. Even though some children you know, did understand. And we'll talk about it afterwards. But that, but, but that has, that's a continuation of the whole Chetney tradition. Okay. Just in terms of the, you know, the idea that some of the other that Chetney at a particular point actually Transcends into the Trinidadian national consciousness. 
the, it makes the jump from the private space of the East Indians or the Indo Caribbean. Yeah, from, from the Matico, yeah, Matico pri from the privacy yeah, of Matico, Matico into, into the, the public space. space. So, just, just a little bit about the transitions that took place and also the central role of Sundar Popo in that, mm. in terms of the one person, in terms of the recordings that he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, well, you see, the, the, the movement from the private to the public space is part of that whole Indian effort to be recognized, to be recognized. So we had that day, you have your Calypso, what do we have? But yeah, we have something. So it was, it was, it was an effort to, if you say, match the, the black public, the black, black public presence in music through Calypso and all of those things. So now, to now match it with something that, that is indigenously Indian. And that, that is how there's a transition from the private to the, to the public space. And that is where I think Sundar Prabhu comes in because he was a pioneer in, in bringing Chutney out of the Matikor space into the public space. And, that, that, and that, that is the kind of recognition that is now given to him because he was brave enough because to do that wasn't, wasn't easy. This is a very private ceremony. Men are even allowed. It was not normal. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. Of, of course not. So, 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 so he was really breaking a, you know, a very important tradition of, of, of this kind of tribal secrecy where we do things among ourselves and don't let the public know. And, and, and here's an individual who was brave enough to defy that tradition of, of privacy and bring it out into the public. And, and, and of course, I think that, you know, gave, gave the Indian presence a considerable boost. That now they had something to match um, black, black musicians. नाना नानी घर से निकले धीरे धीरे चलती गई मधुरा के दुकान में दोनों जाके बैठे गए नाना चले आ 